light is an elusive, mystifying form of energy. Although invisible by itself, light can be used to form images on film. And light reveals most of what we know about our surroundings. How can invisible energy make things visible? A laser produces a very intense beam of light. We don't see a beam when the laser is turned on because none of the light energy reaches us. But a white card reflects the light, sending some of it in our direction. The reflected light that reaches us is what makes the spot visible. Smoke will also reflect laser light. What we see is not the laser beam directly, but thousands of tiny smoke particles, each one reflecting a little bit of light energy each becoming a source of light. Imagine a single smoke particle entering the laser beam. It behaves like a light source, sending rays of light off in all directions. Because it is so small, we can think of it as a point source. If the human eye captures just a tiny portion of the light rays, it will see the smoke particle. Of course, every particle in the beam is a source of light rays, and the eye captures a little bit from each of them. The eye is able to organize the light from thousands of tiny smoke particles so that what we see is a single thin beam. The world around us acts like an infinite number of point sources, each reflecting light from the sun and sending it off in all directions. The human eye captures a tiny bit of this reflected light and organizes it to form an image. A camera gathers the light onto a piece of film. It organizes the light to produce a tiny replica of our surroundings. Because of this ability, we can use the camera to record human events. Action. The images a movie camera records on film can later be used to recreate the event. The heart of any camera is its lens. This carefully shaped piece of glass is what captures light and organizes it to form an image. The lens relies on an important property of light. The fact that it can change direction as it passes from one substance to another. Because water is more dense than air, it causes light passing through it to slow down. When a light ray strikes the water surface at an angle, it changes direction. The greater the angle, the greater the change. The bending of light as it passes from one medium to another is called refraction. The light behaves like a set of wheels. On a smooth surface, the wheels move quickly. On a rough surface, they move slowly. When the wheels roll into the rough surface at an angle, they slow down and turn slightly. What results is a change in direction, a refraction. Glass can refract light too, but unlike water, it can be formed and polished to a permanent shape. The shape of the glass determines how it will bend light. A glass block with parallel sides displaces a light beam by bending it twice. No matter how the block is turned, the light ray always comes out in the same direction it went in. A three-sided piece of glass called a prism can permanently change the direction of the light. It bends light twice in the same direction once when the ray enters the glass and again when it leaves. A single prism can't bring light rays together.
Each parallel ray that enters the prism is refracted the same way so that all the rays come out at the same angle. But two prisms, arranged base to base, can make the light rays cross. They can focus three rays to a single point. A curved piece of glass called a lens does the same thing. It focuses parallel rays of light to a single focal point. No matter where a parallel ray strikes the lens, it will be bent just enough to pass through the focal point. The distance between the lens and focal point is the focal length of the lens. The focal length of a lens is determined by its shape. A lens like this has a short focal length because the incoming rays strike its surface at a greater angle and are refracted more toward the center. A thin lens has a long focal length. The incoming rays strike the lens surface at a very small angle, so they are only slightly refracted by the glass. We have used parallel rays to determine the focal length of a lens. A point source produces non-parallel rays. They focus further to the right, beyond the focal length. Watch what happens when a tiny light source is placed near a real lens. In order to get a sharp focus, we must move the screen away from the lens beyond the focal length. But when the light source is moved further away, the point where its rays focus gets closer to the lens. The further away the source is moved, the more nearly parallel its rays become. If it gets far enough away, the rays become parallel and focus right at the point we started with. So distant is the sun that its rays are considered to be parallel. Only when the lens and screen are separated by the focal length will a sharp image of the sun be formed. How does a lens organize light to form a more complex image? by collecting the light from each part of an object and bringing it to a focus on the other side. For every position of the light source on the left, a matching focus point appears on the right. The lens is able to organize the light rays it collects so that the focus points come out in the right order. The only difference is that the focus points are arranged in reverse order and they are closer together. The world around us acts like an infinite number of these point sources, each reflecting light from the sun and sending it off in all directions. A tiny bit of the light can be captured by a lens and brought to a focus. Point by point, a small replica of an object is produced on the screen a real image that can be recorded on film. Only when the lens is a precise distance from the screen will it produce a sharp image. Uh, 40 for 37 or what? Focus on the columns and focus is right there. By exposing a piece of film at the point where the light is focused, we can make a permanent record of the image. Virtually all cameras have these basic elements, a lens, to form the image, film to record it, and a box to keep out stray light. In a movie camera, a long strip of film is used so that thousands of exposures can be made on one roll. A precise system of gears and pins moves the film past the focal point of the lens one frame at a time. If the exposures are made rapidly enough and then later projected at the same speed, we can produce a moving image, a faithful imitation of a live event. Eighty-three apple, take two. Action, bring it on in. Here are the images formed by the camera lens. 
tiny replicas of a life-sized event. By projecting the images in rapid succession, we can produce the illusion that the event is taking place all over again. The most remarkable device for making an image is not an invention of man, but the human eye itself. Although a highly complex organ, the eye works like a simple camera. A curved lens collects light from the outside world and brings it to a focus on the retina. Light-sensitive cells convert the image to signals that travel to the brain through the optic nerve. The simple lens found in the eye bends light to form an image, but the brain must be used to interpret the image. This powerful combination has enabled us to develop sophisticated methods for producing images. Images we can use to gain a better understanding of ourselves.